Hello art lovers from all around the world watching me from the lockdown gallery today out of which I am presenting artists that I represent in my art collection and gallery. I want to start with this magnificent view out of my window where if I can get my head out of the picture you can actually see the ocean and the sky so pretty so it has been raining here in the last couple of days i'm very happy that it stopped raining and so while we're in our home confinements we can look out the window and we can actually see some sunlight and the ocean i'm reporting from my living room because my gallery has been closed like many other businesses had to close uh, due to the coronavirus. Uh, so I'm inviting you to my living room. And yes, it's true, we do live here. This is our living room, me, my wife, and my four-year-old daughter. So in the evenings I come out and I put some artwork out on the floor that I can talk about with you. So welcome to my living room, really. Today, I want to discuss the artwork of Lydia Hoffnungsthal. She's master student of Professor Jörg Immendorf from Germany. Her artwork uh, is very expressive. It's very self-established yet it has clearly the handwriting of her professor today i want to discuss the art i don't want to listen to myself but i do want to work of lydia hoffnungsthal see me and i want to see you so hi everyone if you're online please Send me a message, say hello, and I will say back to you. I'm trying to look at two screens at the same time. So there's people who are watching me on Facebook and there's other people watching me on YouTube. So it's not easy to go between these two. So I'm going to try and reach all of you. But I'm happy that you're here with me uh, tonight as we're going to be discussing the art of Lydia Hoffnungsthal, a uh, German painter and artist, master student of Professor Immendorf in Cologne. Lydia, when she was a young girl, was already a very quirky, happy child who loved nothing more than to spend her days in the graphic art studio of her dad, which is where she would take many articles that she found, leftover pieces that he used to work, and she would make and create her own art as a little child. But what's very interesting about the story of Lydia Hoffnungsthal is that the reason most probably why her life turned out to be in art is that she met those artists in her dad's workshop. And those artists that came in with all their glory and all the way they were shining and they were like about art and it was fascinating. So she met these people and it's always put a color on her work. And it's something that has stuck with her. She has finished her studies in 1991 in Germany and then she has moved 25 years ago from Cologne to Mallorca to make this the center of her, uh, of her life uh, and also of her working life. And uh, I met her in Mallorca because I have a gallery in Mallorca and so we got together there and uh, I have been representing her in my collection since. She is a sunshine um, of a person. Uh, I really love her to bits. Talking to her for hours is is endearing for everybody's soul. Uh, and she has this way about her of making you happy even in times when you're sad. So I've just spoken to uh, Lydia today uh, in the afternoon because she was walking her dog. She's allowed to walk her dog three times a day and I'm not allowed to be outside, but I was in my workshop. 
So I met her as she was walking by with our dog and we had a little conversation today. And immediately after I walked home, I was happier. I was just happy to see her. She just puts that joy into your heart. She's a wonderful person. And you know, what's so inspiring is that when, when you have art of Lydia in your house, you can feel that joy, not joking. It's the centerpiece of her artwork is this joy in color, in expression, and uh, in the materials that she uses, where she really goes back to nature uh, uh, and she takes pieces from nature, textures, flowers, plants, soil, earth, sand, and she uses it. She works mainly in Mallorca, but also has studios in Abu Dhabi and in other parts of the world where she goes and she works. Uh, it is really a pleasure that she is my neighbor, actually, and not just an artist that I can represent. So I'm really happy to have her in my collection. Um, what else is there to say? She's been represented in art fairs and galleries all around the world. Uh, below this video, there is a link and it links directly to her profile. Now, we are in Corona times, guys. And Corona times means I don't want to talk about the virus conspiracy theories. I don't want to talk about any of that. I want to talk about the positive stuff that, you know, the fact that there is a tomorrow and that there is an after this virus and there is a time when this is all over and it'll move on. In the time that we're confined in our homes, I as a gallerist, the most conversations I have are with my artists because they're the center of my universe. And I speak to them and I find out how they're doing. And you know what, 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 what makes me so sad is that most of them, their shows have been canceled for the next year and for the next two years and sometimes even three years. And I've been told by artists that how their shows got canceled for this year, they haven't just been moved back with everybody else, but they have been realigned at the back of the line. So if you're in a, uh, an artist that has a, a show, an exhibition planned for a museum, that show has probably been planned for a year, two years, or three years even in advance. And when your slot is your slot and you lose it, you're not only going to lose that year, you're going to lose two, three, two years, three years, sometimes four years. I spoke to an artist that I represent that she was supposed to have a show in Munich in April this year, and they've moved it to 2023. Can you believe it? It's horrible for artists. It's a horrible time, and we have to support our artists because they are the reason why in your confinement you can watch a movie you can listen to music you can be in a living room full of paintings and sculptures and you can enjoy art because of artists i would say that 99 percent of the world is created by artists we have to support these people and the question that has been raised by a person the other day that said, now is an artist's work an essential work? Because they said that if your work is essential, you can go back to work. Yes, it is essential. It's the probably most essential job of them all. Because what if this, if we're fighting this war against the corona or this illness for any other reason than to have art in our lives, then we're wrong. It can only be to fight for the art. And I've said it before in another show, and I want to say it one more time. Winston Churchill, when asked why he didn't want to bomb the hell out of a castle that was filled with art, and instead have the soldiers go in and take the art out before they bombed it, is because he said, if it's not because of the art, why are we fighting the fucking war? Okay, I want to stick by these words of Winston Churchill, who was a very smart leader. If we don't fight the war against the coronavirus for the one only reason that art will live on and will continue to live on in our lives, we have no means of being here at all. Support your local artists because they are around you and they are alive and they need to eat and they have families to feed, cars they need to run, bills they need to pay, material they need to buy. If you can buy art, Today, you're saving the life of an artist and you're making him go on. And you know what? There's this time that we live in right now 
where like the artists are at home and they're calling their friends and they're asking their friends whether they were going to like buy a piece of art of them or if they could just buy a postcard or anything just so they can buy food. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Artists are not meant to come out into this world right now to go and sell their art. Art is sold by gallerists. It's sold by collections. It's sold in shops by business people and by collectors like I am one. You buy your art with me and we will sell the art for the artists. The artists are supposed to work, 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 and be creative because that's what this world is about, art. So here's my little rant on art. I'm done with that. Back to Lydia. Um, I'm gonna pick up my favorite gloves. They are here. So um, because I have a big respect for art and artists' work, I always use gloves. Uh, I don't touch them with my hands for the simple reasons that I might have some fat on my hand or something else. And if I touch the art with that, that'll be on the art. It'll mess it up. It's not nice. I wouldn't want anybody to come into my house either and touch my art or my sculptures. And as you can see, I've got many of all of them. So this is so cute. Um, before I started the show, I said to my daughter, listen, where's daddy's gloves? Where did you put daddy's gloves? Daddy's looking for his gloves. <laughs> I didn't find my gloves and I was like getting like I gotta go live I gotta go online I gotta help my artists and I and where's my gloves and she gave me hers you know you gotta give it up for my daughter isn't she the cutest person in the world she's like daddy you can use mine Hallo Joe Leitner, Servus, Grüße nach Wien. Miriam, Grüße nach Wien. Hey Lizzie, how are you? I was so glad to hear from you yesterday. I was so happy that you actually got in touch and the story you told me just reminded me. Boom, there she was, I remember her. <laughs> I have to hold my... Did you all see my gloves? It's like my little girl gave me the right gloves to use. Isn't she cute? All right. Anyways, I found my gloves. I'll put them on. <laughs> I'm going to use mine because I think I fit better. You pass and pesa. To everyone who's watching from another page, if you're watching from Ed Kinski, the Kinski collection, or any uh, Palmer Hedwig by Ed Kinski or uh, from from any other page, please come to Ed Kinski, Die Sammlung Kinski, where I am live and talk to me here in the comments because I can read your comments here, okay? So if you're writing questions and there's nobody answering, it's probably because you're on the wrong page. I'm happy that you're here and you're following and that we're watching. Hey, look, Lydia's come online. So from now on, I cannot talk any stupid stuff. I need to say the right things. There you are. So everybody's been moved over. Hi, guys. Right, so I've got the right gloves. And I want to jump right into the art of Lydia Hoffnungsthal. Okay, one more time. Lydia, master student of Professor Immendorf. Professor Immendorf. Uh, one of the most famous German painters in his time. Um, he's responsible for a young guild of artists. They call the young wild ones. That's what they call them. And it, it, in this group, uh, it, it consists of other artists such like Penck and himself, uh, who was a good friend, uh, and, and many other artists of that time from the Düsseldorf school. So, um, um, they, what, what happened is that, uh, Jörg Immendorf, the artist, he had a bar in Hamburg and they would meet there and they would like conspire. <laughs> and from that conspiration, that little group of people, it came out to be such expressive, important art in the German art world, uh, that's still talked about today. So the real stars, superstars of the art business. Hi, Lydia. So the person I'm talking about is actually in this chat and how great is that? We all give it up and say, hello, Lydia. Hi. I'm so happy you're here. And now I've got like, you know, I've got the fevers. I'm going to say the right things. So, um, yeah, you're sunshine. Okay. So the, 
these people, Professor Immendorf, Jörg Immendorf, he wasn't a professor all the time. He was a, a political guy. He wanted to revolt against the system, revolt against, um, revolt against the, the, how do you say, the establishment. And he wanted to change something. So he was really out there getting in trouble. And it, he was all about getting in trouble. It, it was what he did. He, he loved getting in, himself into trouble uh, and then putting it on, uh, making it public, public trouble. Uh, and it worked. Um, and also, yes, Elvira Bach, Judith, thank you. El Elvira Bach, she was a young wild one. She was a part of that gang. She's a very famous German painter. She's a female painter. So it's really nice to also have some women that are linked to that story, really. It's really interesting. Um, Professor Jörg Immendorf. Yeah, Jörg, as a, as a young artist and as a, as a young painter, he himself was a big fan, or probably more than just a fan. He was a friend um, with. Um, with Joseph Boyce and Joseph Boyce was, he became like a mentor, father figure, friend kind of guy for, for, for Immendorf who took a lot of the ideas and the ideology and the philosophy of the work of Boyce. You can find it in the expressive work of, you can find it in the expressive work of Immendorf and then yeah, I, did you, did you, Lydia, did you ever meet Elvira yourself? Have you met her? Because I've met her. <laughs> I met her in Berlin and we had a glass of red wine together outside the tippy And I think you did, you were there. We, we were having a, a, a glass of red wine with her and her, I think it was her son who was there. It's really nice. She's such a beautiful mind. Like, you know, I represent a lot of female artists in my collection and in my gallery. And I have to say that, you know, I also represent a lot of male artists, but I, I really have a very special connection to all of my female artists. And I, I, I'm, I, I'm very happy about that. Yeah, you were there, you did. We met her, we had a glass of wine with her. It was a really nice conversation. She told us about her work. So she's also a part of that gang. Uh, wow, Lydia, I would have thought maybe, but okay. It's a great, it's a, a great, a great woman. You would have loved her. Anyway, she, she's as fun as you are. Plus alcohol. <laughs> Plus alcohol. It was with Desiree Nick. Yes. The show I had to go to twice. My wife made me go to see Desiree Nick two times. Not one time, two times. Ah. Oh. Crazy, huh? the time in Berlin, many years. So Immendorf, the professor Immendorf, that was later, he became the professor at the Art Academy. And what he did is he, he was suffering from ALS. So he had this sickness of where his, where the muscles, they dissolve over time and then you die because at, at one point your lung just stops working. And eventually he did die. But before he died, uh, he kept on going to the very last minute. Yeah, to the very last minute, he he would like go from stage to stage to stage and still carry on and not stop. And I think that Lydia would agree that if you had met him, you would you would have probably met a person that is a great example of how to never give up to the last minute. When he was not able to paint anymore, his assistants would go and paint. He would like sit and then it'd be horrible for them, but he would like paint through them uh, and it was a very, I mean, that wasn't a very nice way to work, I can imagine, but it was how he could carry on and get the strength to carry on. Apart obviously from his very young wife, she was like 30 years younger or something. So he, he what I like, you know, he he's the artist that maybe you have seen it. He was making his, his most famous sculpture probably ever was the sculpture of the Brandenburg uh, door. Like there's this big Brandenburg, door in in berlin and he made a huge sculpture of it and i have a friend in berlin and he's a he's a he's a um he 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 runs a meatery yeah so he's a butcher he's a butcher and um he's one of my dearest friends and and it's so funny how his name is Jörg, <laughs> and he looks like Jörg. is very similar they could be twins just with 50 years apart but i've always loved this 
the way that he behaved and the way he thought of an establishment only being there to break it up, to break it open, to get to the core of things, to everything had to be ex ex explosive. Immendorf believed in explosiveness, in activism. Everything was alive and at the center of it. And there was expressiveness in all his work and in his whole being. So yes, I can rant on about Immendorf and how I love his work, but really what I what I'm trying to get to is that I'm so happy that I met Lydia, who was one of his students, and that in her work, none of his political activism is you cannot see that because she's a very she's a very standalone artist and all, all her work is very standalone. It's very sophisticated. She she has a, a style of working that you can recognize all over the world as Lydia. So you will not you will not see him the way I see him through his, through her work, but because I know him and I know her, I get this connection. And for me, it is, uh, it's the expressiveness. It's the, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's the, the way of, of expressing a matter. And she's got it from him because when I see her work, I see it. And maybe you can see that too. If you if you have a look at, at Professor Immendorf and then at Lydia Hoffnungsthal and you can put them into the context, maybe you can you can find what I'm seeing. It's not the explosiveness of work. It's it's not his it's it's not his activism, but it's it's the expressiveness of his work that has been passed on and through and out. And I'm very happy. Uh, in my collection, I have three sculptures and two mixed media paintings. And let's have a look at them, shall we? I'm gonna just pick one up to start with. I want to show you, I want to present to you, I want to present to you the flowering life in your hands 2018. And as I was picking that up, I'm, I'm reading your comment, Lydia, on your professor. And I don't, I don't, I, I think that, um, I think that, uh, that you don't mind me saying that Jörg, when you said Jörg was the best professor and he gave you strength, this is what determined the life in this episode of his life, hit the end, like the last years of his life, it was determined to, to strengthen all his students and to make them, to uplift them to a higher level all the people that he was working with. If, if, if he made you a master student, he did it because he understood the power of your work and how you would carry on his philosophies in, into your lives. And with your work, I can see that. So for me, that was really special to being able to have that also in my collection is really special. So I'm really thankful that you're not only in my collection, but also in my life. And as with uh, any other artists, you are the center of, of why I exist. And I want to make sure that you all come well through these times. <clears throat> so if you want to find out more about this work, you can just click the link in the profile below this video. And you can visit the profile of Lydia on our page. And it's got all the information bunkered there about her life and how she came along as an artist. Um, it can show you the shows that she had, the shows that are now being canceled for this year. Um, and it shows you obviously better graphic images of the work and you can buy it right there. If it's in Europe, it's a, or the world, I will send this insured in a package. We will wrap this up really nice and neatly so it cannot break. If you're in Mallorca, I will deliver it to your house and we'll hang it together. The Flowering Life in Your Hands from 2018 is mixed media on canvas. Uh, the work is 74 centimeters high, it's 44 centimeters wide. So it's not too big and it can fit everywhere. I'm going to have to switch the screen right now because I cannot see. All right. So that's better so now i can lively see myself i'll put that glove back on yeah i wear this glove uh out of respect for the art 
I wouldn't want to have anybody come into my house and touch my sculptures. I mean, I see people do that all the time, but you know, if you have that, you don't leave your fatty fingerprints on the art and you can actually touch it, feel it and, and get right into the material. So the flowering life in your hands, 2018. And as I understand, uh, something obviously to do with the equilibrium between the man and the woman and how, and how life, uh, um, life itself is made in the hands of the women and how the women are, are necessary in our society and in our world. Um, I think that Lydia believes uh, that if we had let uh, women manage the climate crisis, there wouldn't be any. And, you know, I like the thought. Uh, it doesn't say back to Mother Nature for no reason. <laughs> It doesn't say go back to daddy nature. Daddy nature will fix it. It's always mother nature. You, you, you kind of get the sense for it. And how lovely this is. I'm going to hold this really closely to the camera that you can see it. Now, when I said the expressiveness that she had from her professor, look at it. Look at the face on that child. Can you see the face on that child? Uh, try and keep it out of the light so you can actually see it. There you go. The love of detail in her work. So amazing. And then the other thing that I did mention before is that when, uh, when she was working, she likes to work with nature, textiles of the nature, textures, plants, flowers. These are moon poppy flowers. She's dried them up and she's used them. And if, you, if, I, if I come across here, I can feel the roughness. You can hear it, the roughness of the canvas. So you can really see the many layers that she's working in. This is not just something that comes out of an emotion. It's something very well thought of. Um, I would say that most of her works very momentarily so that is true it, it's nothing that she thinks about longer than for the moment and then she's going to be able to transport that on a canvas and that's what she does so flowering life in your hands from 2018 ladies and gentlemen something that will very well fit above your fireplace or on your wall in your house and if i if i go back then i want to emphasize what I said before about her understanding of colors and her understanding of adding colors. If you had this in your house, look at all the art behind it. It, it blends in. It blends in. It's soothing and pleasurable for the eye. It is something totally sophisticated, yet it fits very well into your collection. You don't have to create a massive space for it. Perfect for your living room. Let's go to the next work. This one's a bit heavy. I've had it here behind me all the time. Uh, I'm going to pick it up. Whoa. Right now, just so you can see, mixed media on canvas. All the work I have is original and unique. It's all signed by the artist and I do give certification on all my work. So the provenance in most of my work is directly from the artist because I go around the world, I meet them and I, I share my life with them. Um, but if at one point I buy something that's not from an artist, um, then I, in my provenance, you will see that where I bought it, what date, who's the collection or collector I bought it from. Or if I bought it at a, an auction house, it'll say that too. So that you know that whenever you buy a piece of art from my collection, 100% stringent back to the artist okay Woo. a lot of sport today as everything's very heavy uh this is the modigliani nude dreaming it's mixed media on canvas from 2019 it's 100 and 100 centimeters you can see it and i have to move back all the way so that you can see the most of it but what's most important in it is, again, you can see the nature that she always uses, like grass homes. It, it's, it's something in all of her work, there's something natural. It's a texture, a textile, a plant, anything, something's always there. Sand, 
to use in this, what I say is probably the strongest standalone uh, sign of work of Lydia. If you see a painting that has this kind of texture, it is uh, Hoffnungsthal. And it's definitely one of her paintings. I've never seen it on anybody anybody's uh, anybody else's work. So it's something that's really, it really stands for her work. It makes it very stand out. So this guy here, here, this guy, that's an Osborne bull. And the story with these bulls is, is that they're in, in Mallorca, they are a traditional sign. Those bulls are everywhere. I mean, everywhere. Everyone's got these. So to use this motive and combine it with an expressive motive, like with the nude lady, is a genius idea. Okay? A genius. And it makes a lot of sense. And it's very pleasing for my eye because I'm not just looking at a teak wooden bull, Osborne bull, but I'm looking at a motive. There is layers of information on this canvas more than one. And that's what makes it really interesting. More than one layer of information on a piece of art is always great because it makes you want to look at it for a longer time. And you never get tired, obviously, of watching it. Here, I'm going to come close to the computer so that you can get a closer look. Obviously, in my online shop is all of these works in a much better quality. So the link below this video is where you want to go to see her profile, read her story, and obviously eventually end up in the online store where you can collect this piece of art. And I'm pretty sure that it's going to make a great piece of work in your house. The Modigliani Nude Dreaming from 2019 from Lydia Hoffnungsthal. Okay, well, I'll put this beauty back into place. So you can see that every day now for four days, I've been changing my scenery just for you. I hope you enjoy it. Art is like watching television, okay? You watch it because you want to turn those off. And you want to be lost in a world of thought that belongs to you and to nobody else. I get that uh, very much so, which is why I love collecting art. Um, let me see if everyone's still here. Uh, yes. Commentaries. Many people still here. Thank you so much. I'm happy that you're still here watching me. Good. I want to show you uh, a stone a sculpture by Lydia. Those are really heavy things, okay? So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over to the sculpture. This makes a lot of sense. Look at it. This is called the Mediterranean Circle. The Mediterranean Circle. It's also from 2019. It's a Marese stone, which is a typical building stone here on the island. It weighs a bunch. So I would say... 20 kilos or 25 kilos easily. And what I love about it is because I'm a welder um, and I love steel and I do my own furniture, but I weld my own furniture. I love steel. And she has worked a steel snail right into the center of the stone. And this is also what's representable of that expressionism that she has from her professor. There is a center of attention that draws you in and that's so expressive. And then because it fits so well, she's used all these clever colors around the center, the acrylic, the crayons. It looks like cave paintings, but it's so much more because of the, of the, um, how how would you explain that the best? It's 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 on such a on such a higher level because of the steel and how of how it's made. So yeah, it looks like a bit of a, an antique plate, really. 
but it looks like an antique plate made by aliens. And that's interesting. And it draws my attention to it immediately. And if you can imagine having this on your fireplace or on your wall, everyone's, everyone that comes and visits your house is going to just run to that stone and want to touch it. Everyone. Nobody's not going to look at it and love it. Let's go to another stone I got. And it's this one. And it shows a woman as she's stepping up a staircase. And it's also got many layers. And you will notice the red color, how she's worked the red color into that stone. And it looks a little bit like blood. But it's very well done. And again, also in this painting, the expressiveness and those feet. I love how you can see the motion, the actual motion of this woman as she's climbing up the stairs, this actual motion, you can actually see it. That's really good. And from the side, it looks like it's been plastered and then beaten off. That's really amazing. You gotta love that stone. Also, that stone about twenty-five kilos, around forty by fifty centimeters in total. And now I'm gonna do what I've been looking forward to do all day long. I wanna be on my knees and worship my art from the floor. But really, no, I'm just coming down here because I need to show you one last piece. One last piece of very important art from Lydia Hoffnungsthal. And that's this. Isn't it a wonderful piece of stone? I adore this work. A Merezi stone, teak wood swimmers, one on the back, one breast swimming water in such a distinctive color blue and if you come close another blue and another one and also almost purple the stone is from 2007 so it kind of gives you an idea of how durable this material is it won't break for another 50 years easy on your wall or above your fireplace in the house is the perfect place for it. Do not put it at your poolside because it will not withstand the rain and the bad weather outside. Last, before I let you go, I wanna show you another work of another artist that I keep in my collection that we already spoke about yesterday, Vicky Perez a sculpture from Palma. She's an Argentinian artist that lives in Mallorca and that makes these wonderful divers, these sculptures that I have standing in my gallery. And she also, like Lydia, she makes her own pigments and her own colors. So she really has a great understanding for the color and it's unique. But what is so great and why I wanted to show you this is so that you could see these two, these two artists do not know each other, okay? But both of them have perfect knowledge of the ergonometry of the body. Look at it. It could be one, one sculpture. You would never believe that this is the work of two people, right? Isn't that amazing? Woo. I have a thing for divers, obviously. I'll put that back. Right. And whoop, I'm gonna pick you back up, pick you back here. Thank you for tuning in today. Today we spoke about Lydia Hoffnungsthal. She was a master student of Professor um, Jörg Immendorf in Germany, 
who himself was the inventor of the of a gang called the Young Wild Ones with Elvira Bach and uh, A.R. Penck. Uh, this is elite German painting from the finest. Uh, she was a master student of these people. She's keeping that line of professionalism. It transports through her work. You can see the expressiveness and decisiveness of, uh, of her professor in her work. She's a very self and standalone artist. Her art speaks for herself. It's unique. It's original. You can see her art represented all over the world. Um, she works for Mallorca and in her studio in Abu Dhabi. Um, so she's an internationally renowned artist. I'm happy to represent this work of her in my gallery. I'm happy that I can talk to you about her and that I could show her work for you today so that you get, get like a feeling for the size of it. If you like it, click the link below this video, check out the web shop and the description of her profile and uh, go and get whatever you need. Uh, I wanna help the, these artists. I wanna help her and all my other artists get through these tough times. They cannot exhibit, all the galleries are closed. I am the voice. I need to bring it out there. So go to my shop, click whatever you love the best, get it. I will make sure it gets to you safe and sound. Have a nice evening for today. I'll talk to you tomorrow.